today, Brother Andre, we're going to talk about the difference between the Old Testament prophet and the New Testament prophet. You said something when you were ministering here recently at Church for All Nations, that there are New Testament prophets that are operating with an Old Testament prophetic mindset, prophet mindset. And the fact of it, under the Old Covenant, they weren't born again. Yes. Under the New Covenant... All of us that receive the Lord, we're born again. We're alive unto God. We have the Holy Spirit, not just upon us, but within us. Gifts of the Spirit. We're alive unto God. We can hear the voice of God. So let's talk about that. What's the difference between an Old Testament prophet and a New Testament prophet? Yeah. Now, thank you, especially you know, for the opportunity to speak into your lives today and to be on this broadcast. Um, we do pray that uh, God will touch you where you are and you would sense the presence uh, of the Lord. So thank you, Pastor Mark, for the opportunity. Um, it is a vital uh, you know, part for us to understand the difference between two things. You know, when we read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and he speaks about the gifts, I always, verse 1 always stands out to me where he says, Do not be uninformed. And I feel when it comes to the fivefold, when it comes to the apostolic, when it comes to prophets today, we have many people that are just uninformed. They don't understand the function, and because of that, they, are, they go astray and they fall for things that is not from God because they don't know the truth. We spoke in previous programs about the counterfeits. And so people follow different things and they fall for counterfeits because they don't know, they're not informed as what to look for and what is real you know, in this common age. Now, God has given us the fivefold ministry. When we read Ephesians, he says, Christ appointed. And so he's given us the fivefold ministry. And then he continues and he says to equip his people. Now, our office is, is to equip. As a pastor, your responsibility is to equip the people. It's not to make everyone pastors. As a prophet, my office is to equip God's people, not to generate prophets and make everyone prophets. I can hear the voice of God, but I want to equip people to be able to hear the same voice of God. So therefore, we have to differentiate between the Old Testament and the New Testament and the function of it. Now, to start with today, our role model is Jesus. We look unto Jesus. As a pastor, your role model, your example, you are a disciple of Jesus. As a prophet, I look unto Jesus. I don't look to all or any of the Old Testament prophets and follow their ways, their teachings, their character. I look unto Jesus. And so Jesus was really, he came to introduce a new era that we are living in right now in this time. And I want you in this to read with me in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 uh, to 3. He says, In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed here of all things and through whom he also made the universe. And so there was a time in the Old Testament where prophets played a major role. They were the voice of God. Every nation had sorcerers, had magicians, had mediums, but only Israel had prophets. And God gave them prophets to be able to speak to them, to communicate to them, because they clarified that God wanted to communicate. Now, in the Old Testament, whenever a prophet came on the scene, it was because people broke a covenant with God through sin. And so a prophet was always there to remind them that there's a covenant and they sinned and they've broken that covenant with God. They reminded the people of that. And so the function that they had in various ways is they brought judgment. You know, they, they prophesied and spake, spoke over nations. They called droughts. They, you know, the, that's the way that they functioned. But then a new era started and Jesus said, it is finished, it is done on the cross. And he came to restore relationship back from humankind to God and God to humankind. So suddenly we can hear God directly again and we do not need 
a medium. We don't do, we do not need, you know, uh, someone that moves between us and God. We have a direct relationship, everyone, to hear the word of the Lord, to hear the voice of God. And it's God's intention and desire that everyone would hear him. As a father, I want my children to be in relationship with me. I want them to hear me. I want them to fellowship with me. And so in the Old Testament, they said, no, rather speak to Moses. You know, don't speak to us directly. And so God had this whole process and program to restore us back to him. And now we are reunited with the Lord. He continues to say, in Hebrews verse, uh, uh, verse 1, verse 3, it says, The Son is the radiance of the glory and the exact representation of His being, sustaining all things by His powerful Word. And that's why the Word of God is so powerful today, because everything gets sustained by the Word. Now He says, After He had provided purification for sins, He sat down at the right hand of the Majesty in heaven. So prophets in the Old Testament reminded people of covenant that was often broken by sin. And now today, the function of the prophet is completely different. There's still a fivefold office that functions. There's still prophets. I often say the only thing that an Old Testament prophet and a New Testament prophet have in common is the word prophet. Nothing else. They are complete, completely two different you know, creations compared to the old and the new. And so the purpose of the New Testament prophet is not to be the primary voice of God in the earth as in the Old Testament. Now it is encouraging people, strengthening people to return back to God. And so in the Old Testament, prophets reminded people of the covenant that was broken by sin. In the New Testament, prophets are there to remind people of the covenant that they have with God that has been restored by the cross. And so their function is every now and again to step in and say, remember, Jesus paid a price. And because of that price, you can have access to him and he can speak to you directly. So there's still a part that it plays in the, the New Testament. So I would say the purpose of the New Testament prophet is primarily to strengthen your relationship with God, to strengthen your walk with God so that you can become, become stronger in your faith and your walk with Him. Now, Andre, what about Amos chapter 3 verse 7? In Amos 3 verse 7, he says now, um, he says, Surely the sovereign Lord does nothing without revealing His plan to His servants, the prophets. And so people still have an Old Testament mindset that whatever God does in these days has to go through His prophets first. That is an Old Testament principle. And it did function in that way in the past. But in the New Testament, we have His Spirit. New Testament, we are in direct communication with the Father. If God has to speak through prophets today in everything that He does in the earth, we are going to miss out in what God wants to do. Because prophets are people like everyone else. They make mistakes, they make limitations, and God paid a very expensive price by sending His Son to restore humankind back to Him. Now, that doesn't mean that prophets cannot, cannot have insight into situations. That doesn't mean that they don't have authority, they don't have a purpose or a function. They have a purpose and a function in the earth today, but that purpose is not to bring judgment upon nations, is not to bring judgment on the church itself, but it's there to strengthen nations, to strengthen the church, to return to God and to come back to Him. Now, there's two things that I sense when it comes to a New Testament prophet to help you to discern two things that I pick up with a New Testament prophet. Number one, now remember we use Jesus as an example. I look at the life of Jesus. I study Jesus as the prophet. Jesus the prophet. You know, in the fivefold, we can study him, Jesus, as the pastor. And we can look at his, his pastoring methods, how he treats his disciples, how he trains them. And we use that as an example, not someone in the Old Testament. And so the same thing with the prophetic, I use Jesus as the prophet. And I look at his method, I look at his ways. Jesus was very centered, 
you know, on the will of the Father, very focused on his assignment. He had a clear message when he came to earth. He, had, he was focused exactly on what he needed to do. And so I study him and I study his life. And one thing that I pick up is in John chapter 4, verse 6, where Jesus meets the woman at the well. And I pick up, I see he arrives at the well and he says to this woman, he says, will you give me a drink? And then um, she says, well, you are a Jew and I am a, a, a Gentile and you know that we don't associate with one another. So how can you ask me for a drink? And then he continues with the conversation and then it gets to a place in uh, the last verse, verse 19. Sir, the woman said, surely you are a prophet. And so I look at his method and I see how he does not introduce himself as a prophet. He does not introduce himself in, in some office or some place, but he is relational. He starts a conversation. He does not elevate himself. He does not, does not put himself in a place where he's inaccessible. No, he starts a conversation with her and asks a normal question. Will you give me a drink? And from that place, he starts to minister to her. And then she says, truly, you are a prophet. And so number one, I find that New Testament prophets are relational. It means that they are not a part or a group of people that is secluded somewhere in the earth and that's not connected with what God is doing in the earth and just come out every now and again, bring a word and leave like the Old Testament. No, they're part of society. We have marketplace prophets. We have prophets that are in different positions and that functions on different platforms as God gives them insight in those places, but they are relational, you know, today. And then secondly, I find in Acts chapter 13, verse 1, he says, Now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers. And Acts is really the starting of the New Testament. And we find prophets in the church at Antioch. And so when I look at New Testament prophets, there's two things that stands out to me. Number one, they are relational. And then number two, they are in the church. They are not outside of the church building a ministry, a name, a platform. They bring their gifting to the local church and they are submitted under a pastor, under an apostle, and they are willing to serve. When it comes to the fivefold, we are there to serve the body of Christ. That is the purpose of the fivefold. We are not on some position where society have to serve us. No, we are there to come and say, here is what I have. When I come into your church, I am submitted completely under the covering, under your authority. This morning we had a meeting and I had David there and I said, David, I want you to be there and listen to what I'm saying because I want to be accountable to what I'm sharing. I don't have a different agenda, a different motive. My motive is to strengthen and to build the local church. Even though I have a word of direction, I want to bring it to bring strength to what God has started here. I want to share a secret with you, Pastor Mark, that the Lord shared with me recently when it comes to the Old Testament and the New Testament. You know, we have an understanding in the Old Testament that when God speaks, He first has to speak to the prophet. And God spoke to me in recent times and the Lord asked me a question. He said, Andre, the new era started at the birth of Jesus, the New Testament. And God asked me, He said, when Jesus was born, who did God reveal it to first? The prophet the, or the wise men? Who saw it first, the, the wise men or the shepherds? Now, the wise men is symbolic of prophets. And the shepherd is symbolic of pastors. And so God said to me, when Jesus was born, who did I reveal it to first? And because of our Bible stories, people often say, well, it was the wise men. But no, God first revealed it to the shepherds. God will never do something in a city, in a church, before he reveals it to the shepherd pastor first and then to the prophet. Unfortunately, today, 
There's a society, even in the fivefold, that says, no, we have to be submitted to the prophet. What is the prophet saying? What is the direction of the prophet? In the New Testament, the prophet was never supposed to bring direction to the church. The shepherd sees, the shepherd saw the birth of Jesus, then the wise men, then the prophets. And so the prophet came in to clarify, the prophet came in to confirm what God was doing already within a community. I'm sensing in the time we're living right now that God is building and strengthening the local church once again, the base of the local church, and He's bringing the fivefold back to the local church. And I believe that for a city to be awakened, the church has to be awakened. God is not going to awaken the city, then the church. It's going to start with a group of believers in a place and then from there flow into the town. And so right now there's an awakening and God is calling the prophets, the teachers, the evangelists back to the local church under the governing authority of the pastor or apostle. And we have become a team that are working together once again. And I believe that any form of separation is only an attack of the enemy to separate us from one another. But the word says that the church is built on the foundation of the prophets and the apostles. And so when I submit to you and when I work with you, we are more powerful. What you just said, Brother Andre, I think we could play that the rest of the week to get that. It, things you said just really turned everything right side up. So much of what we've seen in the body of Christ has been that Old Testament mindset. And one of the things, there's a couple of things you said. The New Testament prophet is an equipper and a servant. That is so powerful. Uh, the things that you brought out on that. And I think that has been a deterrent because as that hasn't been the mindset at large. People looked to that gift of the prophet for leadership, for yes. direction. And to me, that is such a dangerous thing because if, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. We have yes. the spirit of Christ and he desires to lead us. But what you just shared, especially me being a shepherd, that is such a breath of fresh air because, and that's why it is such a delight having you come in and minister and brother Ed Trout come in yeah. because there's such a servanthood and it's many of the men that God sends here. It's a servant and equipping because I tell people, you know, Jesus is the great shepherd. I'm an under shepherd under the great shepherd. So my job, my goal, my heart is to represent the Lord, represent the Lord and, and, and other fivefold ministry gifts like that. Because the one thing everybody used to talk about, we've got to get people to church. Oh, the evangelist is in town. The prophet is in town yes. and all of that. And that. But the whole job of the fivefold ministry in Ephesians chapter four is that together the fivefold is to equip the body. Yes. So then they can go do the work of the ministry. They are going to cast out devils. Mm -hmm. They will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. All of that, they'll crush serpents under their feet and all yes. of that. I think that was one of the most beautiful explanations, what you just shared in the last several minutes of what the church should be doing and possibly, largely, why we're not seeing that happen because everybody thinks about coming to the church and the problem is, we all are the church, yes. the body of Christ, and the fivefold. And that is one, the, there was five words the Lord gave me, and I'd shared them with you, change, upheaval, shifting, redirecting, and then increase. And the Lord quickened to me that there's no expiration date on these words. So that happened to start with the corona thing, and it started shaking everything. And I believe the reason for that was Everything was shaken that could be shaken. Yes. So that which cannot be shaken yeah. would remain. Yeah. And what I found is it's not about you or me. It's yeah. about his kingdom. And that's the only unshakable yeah. thing. 
And I think what you described just now is an accurate interpretation, representation, and understanding of how we're supposed to operate. And that is a prophetic word that you received. You received the word from God, a prophetic word over the region. I think one thing that really shake, shakes me and brings the fear of God upon my life is that you will be responsible for what you have done. And so when it comes to an area of influence, God has positioned you here as a pastor in this community and there's a responsibility on you for what happens within this area and through this church, the gift of ministries that flow. And therefore, you know, it really causes my hair to raise when a prophet or any other type of ministry comes into a town and leaves and takes people with them. Our calling is to come and strengthen what God has already established. And I believe that long after we are not here on this earth anymore, this ministry will continue. This church will be here. It was, I was so blessed when you shared with me before the meeting today that the only promise that God gave us was to build the church. God never promised that it's going to build anything else. When you said that, it just brought so much revelation to me. It's a promise of God yeah. that He will build a church. And both of us have a responsibility towards what God is doing and what He's building. And so I can just see, even as a pastor, how God has already led you. Now, I did not receive that word before you received it. I came in and you shared with me and said, this is what God is showing me. But immediately it resonates in my spirit and I can come into agreement and say, yes, that is what I sense. And I can see the plan of God. But that word was here before I came. And so God is speaking to many shepherds today, but they are looking unto prophets for direction, for judgment, and they're not hearing the word of the Lord. And it's our responsibility as a pastor, as an apostle, to hear from the Lord what is His assignment for you in this community and in this church. And what you shared recently, I ministered out of town at a local church in another region. And, you know, I know when you travel, like when you came in, you start sensing things in this region. So I was out of town and ministering at another church. Now, this church is significantly, I mean, it's, fair, it's, it's a lot larger than that church and things like that. But when I went in there, I placed myself yes. under that pastor's authority mm -hmm. because he's assigned to that region. Yes. And I went in with my antennas up. I was looking, how can I serve this man of God? He really touched my heart. He was a very humble man of God. And I knew that he had authority in that region. So I'm going into town, not what I could tell him. How can I serve this man? How can I support this man? And, you know, we can't have authority unless we're under authority. Um, when I go overseas and I go, we have missionaries we support. And there are some that we support significantly, but they're in very very strategic locations. But when I go to those regions, I'm under their authority. Yeah. And uh, that's for safety's sake too. Those, I believe the Lord assigns us to areas and things like that. This has been so insightful today and so helpful. And that is one thing I appreciate about you so much is because you have such a servant's heart, but you have a very strong and powerful authority. And you know, your spiritual father, um, I see attributes of you. Lynn and I were just talking about you, that how we see an attribute. And to me, it's like Elisha, Elijah. Elisha poured water on the hands of Elijah. Most people in the Western world, they don't know what that is. But in India, when you go into a restaurant, what you might call a restaurant, they have a little boy there with a towel and he carries a pitcher of water. He pours water on your hands. They don't have running water. It's the lowest job in the restaurant. Wow. And so Elisha poured hand, uh, water on the hands of Elijah. But look what happened because of how he honored Elijah. Mm. He did twice as many miracles. Amazing. I'm telling you, it's, it's the way up in the kingdom is down. Mm. Even our Lord, the Lord Jesus humbled himself 
like no other human yeah. being, and yet he was God. But God exalted him higher than any other. You can't name one person that's more exalted than the Lord Jesus. But it was in contrast to his humility. And we're out of time. Can you pray us out? We've, we've yeah. got just a little over a minute. Pray us out yeah. today. Well, I pray of every person that's watching right now. It doesn't matter what you're facing right now. It doesn't matter where you are. There's a better life that God has for you. And Father, I pray, no matter the obstacle, no matter the challenge, Lord, for your guidance and your leading out of this storm into a place where they prosper and experience life and life in abundance in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. What a rich word today. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you for watching this video and be sure to explore more of my YouTube channel for more content like this. And if you want to learn more about what we do or if you want to partner with us, be sure to visit my website at markcoward.org. May the Lord bless you richly.